Uh, good afternoon to everybody. So uh, my presentation today is about a couple of uh, projects uh, that were a uh, success and we were able to coordinate uh, between uh, mural partners, uh, universities or well, uh, community in general uh, and us to be able to implement and integrate into the mural mobile application a couple of uh, very interesting features. This is why the title is uh, Working Together to Enhance the Moodle app. So first of all, I want to add this bit of a disclaimer about the content authenticity. Uh, I, I saw something like this in the internet. I don't remember where, but I, I thought it was funny to say that, that I am Juan the human, and that there is no uh, AIs involved in the creation of this presentation. All right, so this is our uh, brief summary of the contents. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk a bit about the Moodle app and the different um, uh, plans or uh, solutions we offer in, in, in the team so you can have a full context of uh, everything. And then um, I will talk about how we manage uh, all the process of uh, funding the development of uh, functionality that is going to be part of the Moodle app. And then uh, finally, I will go into specifics and I will talk ab about a couple of projects that were a uh, success. So first of all, uh, very quickly, uh, as you know, the, the Moodle mobile application, um, it is available for uh, Android and Apple devices. Um, it is mostly for students. It works offline. Uh, that's one of uh, its main uh, features. Uh, it supports plugins, uh, but is the developer responsibility uh, making the plugin compatible with the mobile application. Um, one of uh, other, uh, another major feature is uh, the ability uh, to receive uh, push notifications. And as you can see, it's free to use and the code is uh, open source. Uh, and so numbers, we have around 8 million active users per month. Um, these numbers might not be very accurate because it depends a lot of the month and also there are a lot of uh, custom mobile applications and other distributions that are using Moodle that are also using uh, derivate version of the mobile application. So I think that there are more or less like 10 to 12 uh, million users uh, active per month. So as you know, the, the Moodle app is free. Uh, the student, they don't have to pay, students doesn't, they don't, they don't need to pay anything for using the mobile app. Uh, but it had, but there is an option to um, purchase a premium subscription for, uh, or pro, a premium subscription uh, for your Moodle site. Uh, and those are the different uh, subscriptions models. And basically what is providing if you purchase a pr uh, premium subscriptions are uh, unlimited push notifications for any number of uh, devices and some uh, exclusive functionality like uh, QR code login. And then in uh, some new functionality that we are introducing in 4.3 version is uh, biometric login and also the Matomo integration for analytics. That is one of the projects uh, that was a uh, success, and I'm going to talk about uh, it today. Uh, we also have the branded Moodle app that is uh, a replica or your custom version of the Moodle app uh, with your institution branding, or and it support also uh, Google Analytics. It can be used to connect to multiple uh, sites. We have branded apps that are used uh, by the local Minister of Education, for example, in, in Madrid, and they have like 1,500 uh, schools and a site finder, so a school finder, sorry, you can find your school uh, by name because each school has a Moodle installation and then you can connect to that specific installation. And of course, both uh, the plans and the branded Moodle app are uh, helping uh, funding the development of the Moodle mobile application because everything costs money and we need money, we need to pay our developers. And yeah, this is the way we made it possible. So, um, and now I'm going to talk about um, a bit of a history of Moodle, and, uh, because you know that Moodle is open source, uh, but it has received funding in different occasions. Uh, the Penn University has been one of the major contributors uh, 
Uh, you know, the quiz uh, question bank uh, that I'm over here has been uh, working very hard to support this since a lot of years ago. Um, we have the, uh, the Mural User Association that is funding, thanks to the associate's fee, uh, the development of uh, new features and improvements. Uh, also, several institutions has uh, funded, for example, uh, new, uh, the Mural Competency Framework. Uh, or certain functionality, and also we have the mural partners that thanks to the royalties, um, also thanks to uh, acting uh, as a business partner with us for some projects, uh, has been uh, funding also some uh, the developments and improvements in both the mobile application and, and mural itself. All right, so these are the main, main benefits uh, when you manage to find funding. Uh, as you know that um, if you find, find uh, funding and us or a mural partner does the development, uh, quality is something uh, that you will receive as part of the deal. Um, the most important thing, I believe, is the maintenance, the future maintenance uh, of complex functionality. So you pay a one-time uh, fee and then you will have this fee, uh, functionality available for years and years. Um, of course, uh, prioritization uh, over the roadmap, uh, everything, it, it could be considered one of the main uh, benefits as well. And of course, uh, at, at the end is ensuring the, the long-term sustainability of the Moodle project. If you are using Moodle a lot, uh, you get funding because you want to improve it. This is, these are going to benefit not only you, but other institutions. Uh, Moodle will have a still a big reach in the world, and that will help uh, the project and, and everybody using Moodle. One thing that is very important uh, to know is that not any improvement or new feature is suitable for, for core, for the standard Moodle app or, dis, uh, or distribution, or app distribution, sorry. Um, you need to consider that there are some functionalities or features that are very specific for certain institutions and that maybe they don't make any sense outside your uh, sorry institution. Uh, so before uh, thinking that, that, okay, I'm going to pay for this and it's going to be part of, of, of Moodle and I will forget about it. No, we, we need to do this kind of analysis to see if uh, to see is uh, suitable, uh, feasible, as you can see, uh, it could be man uh, we could, we will be able to maintain this new feature uh, in the long term as well, and it is really worth the effort. If it's not a major investment in money and resources, and the result is not going to worth it, that's something that that we need to be uh, sure as well. So this is the overall. Uh, process. Uh, it's about, uh, we have a problem statement, uh, we need to identify the, the real need under, uh, and the possible solution, and then uh, we, uh, Moodle HQ, uh, will say, this is called, uh, suitable for core. Yes, in that case, we, or a partner, will work with, a Moodle partner uh, will work with us to ensure that we can make it uh, suitable for Moodle Core. And if not, you can always uh, work with a Moodle partner so they can create this custom feature for you, uh, mostly uh, creating a new plugin for you or similar. In this, in this process, uh, we can say that the th three parties are involved. Uh, that, that usually uh, the institution that needs uh, this custom, uh, well, the, the institution that wants uh, this uh, own feature in in, uh, in the core, a Moodle partner, and Moodle HQ, because it has to be a three-way conversation. So now I'm going to talk about a couple of success stories. Um, I love this picture. It's super nice. <laughs> um, the first one is uh, a, a new feature that was introduced uh, in the Moodle LMS and the Moodle mobile application version 4.2, uh, and is the availability to, sorry, the ability to have end-to-end uh, -end encrypted push notifications. Uh, they, they, this institution, uh, they had a need to um, 
ensure that all the push notifications that were processed processed sorry by external parties such as uh, Google or Apple uh, they were encrypted to ensure uh, privacy and then um, they reach us we said uh, this is very interesting this could be part of uh, Moodle core but we don't have the resources a good partner such as Catalyst uh, that has uh, development uh, resources can take care of this in coordination with us and then we will integrate this into Moodle core and this is, was a major project it required both development in Moodle MS and also development in uh, our server that we use for uh, iron software sorry we use for push notification that is called iron notifier and also in the mobile application um, I think that around seven people were involved, some doing project management, other doing development, testers, QA, uh, integrators. Um, I can really show you something very visual because uh, it's not something, it doesn't make any sense for you to see some encrypted tests, but this is the result. This is um, configuration page in Moodle where you can say in 4.2 onwards, no, sorry, it is also available in 4.14, if I remember well, because it was backported. Um, and then you can say if you want to encrypt all the push notifications that are uh, coming out the, the Moodle site. And also, if your uh, students or your users are using all devices that are not able to support encryption, you can say that you don't want them to receive the notifications at all, on the or in that case it's okay if the uh, notifications are not encrypted um, as you can see uh, those Android 8 or an iOS uh, 13 uh, n they are not very recent versions so for most of our users it should work out of the box and the other uh, one was uh, something that is new in 4.3, uh, in the Moodle app uh, 4.3 version. This in particular didn't require any work in the LMS part, so it's only something that we've implemented in our app and our app's portal as well. Uh, in this uh, particular, this uh, institution that is the uh, Zurich uh, University of Applied Science, if I remember correctly, sorry, the name is in German. Um, uh, this institution, uh, they were using Matomo, that you know, me, probably you know about it, but it's, a, it's like the Google Analytics uh, open source tool that uh, takes a lot of care in privacy matters. So. Uh, it is designed in a way that you can ensure the user privacy when you are tracking uh, the user interactions with the, with the site. So what we did in this particular case was to work with uh, the Moodle Partner uh, Learning uh, that coordinate all the process to support in this uh, functionality in, in, in the app. And we are making this to be uh, this a premium functionality because it needs to be enabled in our apps portal. And it basically allows you to indicate your Mat Matomo instance data so you can start tracking the user interactions with the mobile app as in the same way you are tracking the user interaction interactions in the Moodle site. Um, it is working quite well because we were able, we managed to uh, add a specific, a specific uh, filter segment here. So when you are uh, watching any page in Matomo, like a dashboard or uh, the visitors log or the most recent, uh, most recent visitors report, you can use this filter to switch between the Moodle site, website, and the Moodle app. Or you can see the both data together. So it is quite useful to compare the, the usage uh, the users are doing, and you can check, check if they are using more or less the mobile app compared to the uh, web version. And as I said, uh, this is going to be available in the next version of the Moodle app, 
and it is going to require a premium subscription. Premium subscription, I didn't say that before, is also free for Moodle Cloud hosted sites. And if your Moodle site is hosted by a Moodle partner, you don't need to pay anything in that case. And it is going to require very basic configuration to start working. Um, yeah, that's all. Uh, I only want to say that um, the Moodle Apps team, we are avail available for you. We are in the Moodle stand that is in the main entrance close to the Moodle shop. And you can visit us anytime and you can ask anything. And um, I think, yeah, we have, I won, I won very quick, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so we have like uh, 10 to 15 minutes for questions. Thank you. Okay, so over there. So I wondered uh, if it will be integrated in the Moodle app as well, or if the users need to use uh, third-party apps um, to ensure communication. Uh, well, yeah, the uh, integration with Matrix, basically in, uh, the way it works right now in, in Moodle MS, is that uh, you can enable it uh, as, uh, in, each, in each course, and then uh, you will see a new link, so you can open uh, an external app, that will be the, uh, your favorite uh, matrix uh, client that the most widely used is Element. And our plan is for not the 4.3 version, but probably the 4.4 version of the mobile app uh, implement a very similar integration that you will be always um, encouraged or forced to use an external app. So it is going to, be, it is going to work very consistently between LMS and the mobile app. You are always uh, requested to use an external application in that case. But the, of course, this is optional and the current messaging system, the internal messaging system, is, it is going to work as normal. In, in general, what we are thinking about, sorry, this integration is that um, Matrix is the first example, uh, but we know that there are some Institutions interested in implementing this as well for uh, Microsoft Teams. So we really want to see real use cases and practice and, and yeah, and ensure that we can offer a very good experience with users. So we will let this functionality to mature a bit in LMS, and then we will implement it for the mobile application. Thank you. Um, so have you considered some way for, um, as far as plug-in compatibility or integration compatibility, for some way for either HQ or uh, the community to, to either give a badge or vote on compatibility issues? So that when we're looking at plugins for our Moodle installation, we can tell whether they're compatible or not? Yes, there is already a, um, um, in the Moodle plugins database, uh, there is an, an award, I think, or a classification that you can search or find uh, plugins with mobile support, I think is the name. I think it's, the name is a word, right? Uh, I don't see technical, yeah. So that already exists, and you can list all the, the, all the plugins that are compatible with the mobile application. I don't have the numbers, but I think that there are like 20 of them, more or less, or maybe something like that, maybe a bit less. But yeah, but for example, um, in the this mon this Monday, uh, th th there was a Death Jam, and one of two of my colleagues, uh, they were working with uh, the plugin developer of uh, sorry developer of the attendance plugin, 
uh, and they made it, no, sorry, checklist, sorry. I always, no, because attendance is already supported, right? Checklist. Uh, with a checklist plugin, and they made it compatible, and it was a matter of hours. He had some previous work done, so that helped a lot, but yeah, that's, that's something you can do. And our plans, I was talking about this precisely with my colleagues, is also for the next version of the mo mobile app to make uh, more examples, to make uh, to provide more tools to developers so they can make their plugins compatible with uh, the mobile app easily. That's the overall plan. But of course, it's a bit challenging because they are different technologies. It's a mobile application is a bit a technology that completely different um, than web browsers. So yeah, it's quite a challenge. Hi. Uh, maybe it's a bit specific, but are you close to solving the notification badge issue on iPhones of uh, no, uh, giving notifications without opening the yeah. app itself? Yeah. You mean the badge that it, it doesn't count the, the unread messages in the? Yes, exactly. So maybe in in the new version. Well, it's not an issue. It's a feature. It's not a bug. It's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that we usually say. Uh, I understand it. Um, so the notification batch number, it is displaying the number of unread notifications from the site, but it's not really coordinated. Um, uh, I mean, it works a bit differently between Android and iOS. So it's a bit confusing. We have an FAQ for, for that. Um, making it to work. Mm, uh, in a way to be very consistent with LMS is quite a challenge because it will require a lot of uh, development in LMS side and there are potential performance issues. There is an issue open about it and if you go to the stand later I can point you to the to the tracker issue about it if you cannot find it uh, where this was discussed. But right now we consider it to be a feature, but of course it is a bit confusing. We understand that. <laughs>